Welcome adventurers. Today I'm going to be making some kind of stuff out of this. Corrugated paper, EVA foam, maybe let's see, chipboard, foam board. I make little shanty buildings and such. First I'm going to start off by cutting some two inch and three inch sections of the like hobby foam board. Um, because I wanted various heights, and this is just going to be the core of everything. Uh, it's the armature, really. So, of course, you cut off your two inch sections, your three inch sections, and just so you have a building block to work with. Then I cut those into varying lengths to make rectangles and cubes. Mostly rectangles, really. So, like, you know, two inch by three inch, three inch by five inch, what have you. I toyed with the idea of leaving them connected for a little bit, and I was like, no, that's just gonna. Let's get complicated things because of the weak corners that it'll create, and I didn't want these to have weak corners. So, I nixed that idea and just cut them all the way through. I don't really record that because you've seen people cut foam core before. Here I'm making some like lean-to style structures, so they have just a simple sloped roof. And all I did was measure down about a quarter inch from what I called the top side. I did that on a couple of pieces for the side ends. And then, of course, for what the back panel is, I cut an entire quarter inch off of the entire length of it so that it would match up. I varied that with a couple of the buildings. I uh, even made some normal pitched roofs that have, uh, you know, if you're looking at it from end on, a triangular shape at the top. Yeah, just like that. And uh, we're going to hot glue them together. So it's, it's a very complicated build today, as you can see. So... We got a bunch of those cut out. I'm going to hot glue them together. Um, I wanted to make some sort of like water tower thing and I found these cheap little Christmas baubles about a year ago at a dollar store. And they came with this nifty little metal like decorative thing on top. I didn't bother trying to cut the Christmas ball in half because uh, I didn't want to screw it up. And it's easy to screw those things up pretty quickly. I've had some experience making a mess of those, so I skipped that. I just glued it into a piece of cardboard tube. Here I'm making a rough outline of the roof of each one of the buildings. I cut it out, I hot glue it on, so that there is now a roof. Some place to put the, you know, the roof type stuff, where shingles and such go. I know, this is, this is very rudimentary stuff. I promise you it looks a lot better in the end. But here I'm just going through and building. Um, this is just something to fill up my board, you know, scatter train style. Uh, it doesn't have to have a lot of interest to it because it's not that important. It's just line of sight cover, height advantages, things like that. There you see I cut out a notch in the tube so they're going to notch over one of the buildings because I wanted it to be kind of intrinsic. Here I'm making doors. One and a half inch tall by one inch wide, medium density chipboard. 100% across the board for everything. They all have the exact same size doors because, you know, they're all the exact same size people, theoretically, I guess. I mean, in real life, doors are all pretty much the same size, so it doesn't hurt. Here I'm cutting out corrugated paper. I intentionally uh, do not measure the widths. This is a shanty town, after all. Not all the corrugated metal they're gonna come across is gonna be the same width. And again, hot glue it together. I was able to glue this together very quickly because I stuck with the hot glue on it. Um, it's very handy, as you all probably know. It definitely made my life easier. Now here, I was just messing around. I was like, I wonder if people had access to just big sheets of metal and if they wrapped them around the infrastructure, a framework of a house, what that would look like. So just a couple of the buildings I took EVA foam, cut out irregular shapes. I didn't measure. I just kind of went at it with the scissors and was like, yeah. And there's my hair blowing into the shot because it's hot in my hobby room and I had a fan going. There, there's the hair again. Anyway, I trim it off to fit and that's kind of what you got. Now some of you longtime viewers who have seen this before, it's a drafting pencil. It's, it's mechanical drafting pencil. It's not kind of like the clicky type, but more you press down and the lead will come out further, the graphite. But it makes this great, like, three-pointed rivet-looking thing shape when you press it into EVA foam or XPS foam or anything like that. I love it for my rivets. 
So that's definitely something to use. Now, if you like watching me super glue toothpick pieces onto pieces of cardboard to make door handles, then you should subscribe, like, and share this video. And of course, if you'd like to support me in a more meaningful way, you can, of course, go to Patreon. I have a few people, about six, actually, very wonderful people who, without their support and the support of viewers like you, this is why it sounds like PBS, but the support of them and viewers like you helps me keep this going. Now, I base coated everything in this kind of satin rusty brown color, so that way I can intentionally leave a lot of it exposed so it looks like rusted metal. And of course, you've seen me do this like in my my ridge hauler build where I kind of painted the corrugated paper to look like corrugated metal. Sponges are your friends, ladies and gentlemen, and the other people who don't identify as ladies and also gentlemen. Uh, pick colors. I just picked some random ones. Uh, it, it didn't matter because these are scrap buildings. The silo thing though, I made its own color. This is like vanilla off-white color. Uh, the key here is not painting all the way to the edge of the little panels I made out of EVA foam. And this is also the same color I use as the base coat for the wood for this one shack that I decided to make look like wood. If of course you want to see more of my how to make very basic textures and shapes on foam, EVA, etc., you can check out my very first video from like a year and a half ago where that's all I did is I took some three inch by three inch pieces and kind of poked holes and glued stuff to them and painted them. Now, I wanted to make a wood color and I've never painted wood before, so I used this hardened leather uh, Army Painter speed paint over that vanilla color turned out, in my opinion, pretty darn awesome. To add variety, I painted this cheap metallic silver over the roof of this building. It took about three coats to get good coverage because of how dark the base coat is. And now, of course, black wash. There's actually a couple of applications of black wash in this video. After I do my rust effect, which ends up looking very much like leopard print when I'm done, I go over it again to kind of mellow it down and then uh, it looks a little bit better. I'm not sure why on this particular little shack it the roof looked very much like leopard print. None of my other buildings did. This one this one definitely did and I was like very confused how that happened. But I go from that dark as the larger blotch of rust and then on down to the smallest portion of the rust which is that dry rust from Army Painter. This is uh, obviously Bleo Air uh, which I really I really do like their paint. See, it's already starting to look like a leopard print. It's crazy. And it gets worse as it goes, as I get the lighter... Because you, you build rust. Rust is speckled and it's all over the place. And in this case, it looked very much... It looked like I was painting Chester Cheeto, for those of you who know what a Cheeto is, uh, as my model for this uh, paint scheme. Uh, and I didn't see it until... Well, it was basically done. And I was like, wait, wait, why does this... Why are those, huh? Ah, oh, crap. There it is, the leopard print. And it becomes even worse when I do the dry rust effect on it. That dry rust paint, I mean, I like it, but at the same time, it really, as you see, looks like leopard print. So of course I go over it all again with black wash to kind of dull that down. Now here, I didn't do anything special other than used, you know, everybody's favorite rust effect, you know, rust paint. Um, I carried it around in my pocket for about an hour before I did this paint job because I find that that is where you get your best effect. Then I went over everything, including Mr. Leopard Print there with a little bit more of it to kind of make it not so leopard printy. And uh, I think my phone notification just went off because somebody forgot to turn off the sound. That's always useful and professional. And that's if nothing. We are professional here at Adventures in Crafting. Painted all my doors black and then use this taupe color to kind of dry brush everything. Uh, that's that's it. I'd like to thank all my patrons. Without them, this couldn't be passable. You know, HBM Girl Potpourri, Ryer Tonic, Ian Clark, and of course, Jesper Karkov, one of my newest patrons, and of course, the legendary LAJ. All of them help support what happens here, and you can too. Now there it is, up close and personal, uh, the dry brushing, 
the addition of the rust effect paint on sections of it really actually made this shack look well, like a shack. Now I don't want you to pay attention to the gray cord in the background because when I started to film this section, I realized my turntable wasn't charged. Again, nothing but professionalism here at Adventures in Crafting. We are, I am, Guinness and I are, pinnacles of professionalism. Of course I use one of those little kitty pipe systems to make a uh, chimney in this building. Lots of shanty shacky looking stuff. Not everybody has the same building skills in whatever apocalyptic setting this is. I really like how this kind of metal rusty looking shacks turned out. The uh, larger one in particular looks very interesting to me. I thought it was pretty cool, but you know, I made it so I'm jaded. Or something like that, not jaded, but you know, biased. Uh, the chimney, by the way, is just a couple of bendy straws. Well, actually, one bendy straw cut on both sides of the bend, and then another section cut and split to go onto it. And there's our water tower. Of course, hand-drawn bricks on the uh, hobby foam. A little dry brushing. Obviously, rust effect to give us a great-looking rusty kind of drips and runs. You water that rust down just a little bit and run it down, and it looks amazing. Now this is what it looks like on the table. That little bobble that came off of that Christmas decoration I put on top of the water tower once again. Uh, because it's nice and flat and makes for a great place that you can put characters to stand up on. Um, here you see, you know, people hiding in the alleys while the soldiers come looking for them. An overhead view of the same thing. Kind of moving the buildings around a little bit so you can see the variation. They have a little height advantage, line of set obstruction. Well, I hope you enjoyed what you watched. Now I want you to go have an adventure in crafting.